Welcome to this recording of Lived 121. This is Dr. Justin Traveler. And what you're about to listen to was a live recording. So as, re as I refer to days and things like that, just know that I am referring to whatever is happening the, at that very moment. And if you want more information, please follow or subscribe to us. We're on YouTube. Instagram, we've got a podcast, Facebook, website, all live to 121. And our mission and purpose is to inspire everyone around us to want to live a longer, fuller life. But really, it's to live to 121 or at least make it feel that way. Meaning, you do what you love and you love what you do. Um, and we want everyone to feel young and healthy at whatever length of life they want to live. So enjoy the following recording. And also, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, put them below and we'll respond quickly. Enjoy. Hey everybody, happy Friday. You gotta love Fridays. Okay, and we are coming and approaching on a holiday weekend. It is Father's Day. Now, that is not to toot my own horn, but I did want to give a shout out uh, to all the fathers, all those who have a father's spirit, whether you have children or not, uh, whether you're an awesome uncle or a grandpa or whatever, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I've always, I don't know, I talk to, to women on Mother's Day and I know that for a lot of women that's a tough day. I don't, I don't hear the same thing about fathers and fathers are just like, all right, you can spoil me all you want. And um, anyway, I, I definitely think that that's a male versus female thing. Um, but I want to wish a happy Father's Day to everyone. And my message today is going to be kind of personal to to my father figure, the father figures in my life. Um I have shared in the past, if you go back to the uh, Memorial Day weekend, I talked a lot about my grandparents, and I have two wonderful grandfathers who are now passed on, but just, I, I'm so thankful, and I feel very blessed that I knew both of my grandpas really well, and uh, got to spend some real quality time with them, so I appreciate that. Um, I also want to give an amazing shout out. Now, I don't even think he has a Facebook account, so my mother-in-law is going to have to pass this on. But I have just one of the best father-in-laws, and that's another blessing that I, you know, I hear different stories about people and their in-laws, and I, I, I sure hope that everybody uh, can love their in-laws like I love mine. They are just so amazing and I feel like I take advantage of them too much because my father-in-law, we call him Papa, and he just he just works for his family and he works for us. He's over like every every day. He's over at our house. They live um about a mile and a half away and my my wife, she's an only daughter. And man, she just, she puts him to work, but he just seems to love it. And so um, I, I just can't say enough about how, how appreciative I am of him to have a great father-in-law who I can talk to. He, does, he doesn't do a lot of talking, but the talking he does is, is quality talking and he just loves and, and supports his, his family. And that, and that very much includes us and all of his kids and all of his grandkids. So that's great. And um, last of all, I, I have to give a shout out to my, my dad, um, who I will, uh, I will attach this message. I just hope he has a great, um, a great weekend and that I've always, I always try to give my appreciation to him. I have a few stories, so there's some stories that I hope fathers can take because number one, I, I am so grateful that my dad taught me um, work ethic. And I, I don't know why, but every time I think of, of my dad, it shoots me to, and you know what? He's more emotional than me. 
So if he here, anyway, I'm going to try really hard. I try really hard every time not to get emotional, but he cries even worse than me. And my mom's even worse than me. So I, I always say I had no hope when it comes to the crying gene. Both of my parents are criers. So anyway, but um, the work ethic, I just, I probably didn't learn the lesson quite as, as well as he. He's a much harder worker than me. He grew up on a farm. I grew up working in farms like around me, but there's a big difference when it's your own. And he had to, you know, milk, get up and milk cows and do all that. And I got to mostly move pipe and haul hay and, and stuff. But I just hear the, the horror stories about um, milking cows. That was a tough one. But I just remember very vividly, we had a wood-burning stove until I was 17 and we moved. And that wood-burning stove required a lot of wood. And, and one of my very fa- I just loved, I loved, loved, loved when I got to go out with my dad. And many times it was just he and I because I was the oldest son and, and the girls didn't enjoy going and my, my younger brother was a little too young for most of this, but um, we would go out and I just remember thinking how tough he was. We would go cut um, uh, wood and, and cut down the fallen trees. We'd go out and clear fallen trees so that we could collect that wood and then it was my job to kind of gather up all the wood and, um, and then I got to chop it and um, I just, I mean, I can, I can picture, I can take myself back to that time we had like the trailer and, uh, or his truck. And anyway, I just love that. And, and, and I remember every time I think, you know, that I've got to work hard, I, I go back and I think of that. And I think of, of hauling wood and, and chopping wood with him and just the time that I got to spend. The other thing is... Um, I always think of, of, of a great story. So my dad was like a lot of dads, I think, and, and like me in a lot of ways where we're not always there at home because we're, we're here at work. And my dad worked really hard. He had to travel for a lot of the time when I grew up. He would get up at, I don't even know, 5, 4.30, 5 in the morning because he'd have to travel. Uh, for a lot of our time as a, as a kid, he was do, working on his master's degree or so there was work and school and, and then he was a bishop for a lot of that time. And so I didn't get to see him a ton, but I did get to see him. A, I shouldn't say I got to see my dad a lot, but, um, but he just always made sure that he had, that there was a presence there. Meaning, so here's, here's a great example that I, I love to share and that I always think of too. So my dad would wake up, and even though he had to be gone long before we were ever awake, even for school, you know, he was, he was long awake, he had this recorder, you know, this, this little tape recorder, and every morning he would, he would hit record before he would leave, and, uh, and he would read scriptures to us, and uh, so that when we, when we were eating breakfast, um, gosh, come on. So that when we were eating breakfast, we could hear his voice reading those scriptures. And, um, and I just remember, well, I remember not appreciating it. In fact, I, I remember as a kid thinking, oh, I've got to listen to dad, read the scriptures before I get to go to school. And so I would hurry, you know, I'd be eating breakfast and be like, come on, dad, I got to get going, read faster. Um, and then he would always leave a really special message at the end and and so now I do not want this to sound blasphemous. So I am not comparing my dad to deity in any way, shape or form. I don't want to say that he was perfect. He was perfect for me, as I like to say. But the reason why I really love that story is because even though he wasn't always there, he was always there. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and to me, that's how I picture my father in heaven. I, I don't get to see him, um, but, but I have his words. I feel like he's always here. Um, and that was, the, that was the sense that I got from my own, my earthly father, um, was that same uh, sense that I, I, I'm so grateful because he instilled that love of God in me uh, because 
because he was he was always present in my life even when he wasn't physically there. I hope that all makes sense, but um I just I I know that I'm fortunate and blessed because there's a lot of people who may not have that relationship with their dad or or father-in-law. I mean, I'm not bragging here. I've just been very blessed that I guess I am bragging. I had a wonderful father who taught me amazing lessons. I've got a great father-in-law. Um, I've got uh, great grandparents who taught me, and I, I knew them well, and I just can't give enough appreciation. So on this Father's Day, Papa, have a great one. Dad, have a great one. I love you all. And uh, for my grandpas that have passed on, I, I hope that they have this message as well. So go and give love to your, uh, to your fathers, to your father figures, and, and even those who may not think that they're super perfect, I hope that you can forgive them and, and realize that I think, I think most dads are just trying their very best. I know I am, and I, and I love my, my family and kids, and, and I, it's like everything that I do, I'm thinking of my family just uh, wanting, to, wanting them to be the best, and I know that's what they did for me. So, I didn't get, I, anyway, I, I didn't hold it all the way together, but that's the message for today. Okay, have a great weekend, everybody. Talk to you on Monday.